Hey everyone, it's Yeshlot here, and I wanted to kind of explain why 2021 showcased the future of gaming. Oh my. Impossible. He's lying. If you at all at any time agree with a point I've made or disagree, do me a solid and drop a like and a comment as it does help the channel. Anyways, I want to explain why 2021 showcased the future of gaming with my experience of playing indie games. 2021 didn't really have a lot that came out due to COVID delays and most of the games that did, well not all of them sucked, a lot of them did fall short. You have games like Resident Evil Village where half of the hype and the marketing for the game was the tall booby lady, she dies in the first act and then it turns to Call of Duty at the end. Two games like Battlefield 2042, where the player base is pretty much non-existent post-launch with tons of bugs and exploits being in the game, to Call of Duty Vanguard, where the only reason anyone buys that game is to level guns for Warzone, and I guess maybe Zombies, which is now a shell of its former self. You have big studios like EA, Ubisoft, and Square Enix who are considering the future of NFTs and blockchains and gaming, while you have companies like Blizzard Activision showcasing problems in the industry women have had to deal with for years, where the higher-ups and the environment they have to work in is extremely toxic and predatory. Now, this is not only just for women, but employees as a whole have had to deal with companies having a record-breaking year and then turning around and firing 160-something employees. It happens in a ton of these AAA studios and developers. This past year has shown me that the games for most of these big developers and publishers will never be trusted when the mindset and the work behind the scenes is skewed to making as much money as possible despite the circumstances and positions the gamers and employees have on it. It doesn't matter if your MMO is the most popular it has ever been, to where you need to stop advertising it, the people in charge will never be happy and once again want to look towards the future. It's hard to be excited for games like Halo when it's delayed, when it finally comes out it's unfinished and issues players have had from Halo 5 are still apparent in Halo Infinite. Here's a comment I made on Angry Joe's Halo 5 review where I complained about not being able to earn my armor because of RNG packs and the fact that players could just spend money to look cool. This was six years ago. Halo Infinite doesn't have RNG packs anymore, but it does have issues where players can't earn their armor fairly, and once again, someone can just spend that money to look cool. And Halo isn't the only thing you can point to where games just don't live up to the hype or feel developed. Games like Anthem, where the game's development was constantly reset, to Back for Blood, where they spout, it's made by the Left 4 Dead team, despite only 7 out of the people who worked on Left 4 Dead helping with Back for Blood, to Amazon's New World, where in an MMO they don't even have different body types and heights at launch, because it's too much to remodel armor sets on those types of bodies, I guess. Not all AAA gaming is bad. Ratchet & Clank A Rift Apart came out in 2021. It was a good game, everyone said. Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 is uh, planned for 2022. God of War Ragnarok is coming out eventually. Elden Ring comes out February. Horizon Forbidden West comes out February. The new Pokemon game is coming out soon. There are a lot of games to look forward to and be excited about for AAA gaming. But if you look at the past and a lot of examples in recent history for AAA gaming, it is uh, no wonder why people think uh, AAA gaming has gone downhill. And one thing I want to uh, clarify, and I think more people should look towards, is indie games. They have so much more to prove and much less to work with, right? The games only thrive by close player interaction and support. I think Moist Critical said it best when watching a great video, by the way, everyone should go watch it, describing why Back for Blood was carried by Valve. Here's a quick clip by it. This video made me realize how ahead of its time Left 4 Dead was. It's actually a product of its time. Like every video game back then for Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 went the extra mile to sell realism like this. But nowadays they don't have to. People are going to buy shit no matter what. So what's the point in putting all the extra effort and time into doing like unique things? like they did for Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, like with the dying animations. It's something people don't even really pay much attention to. Gears of War had the same thing. Gears of War 5 was less advanced than Gears of War 1. Because it doesn't need to be. People buy it no matter what. Now, I think he's completely right, right? Um, the thing with indie games is not everyone will go ahead and buy them, and not everyone's just going to see them when they come out. They have to work so much harder to release a game they can catch the attention and you know spread with word of mouth and it's just that much harder to to garner the success like maybe hollow knight 
or Amori, these other critically acclaimed games, right? And speaking of those games, you know, like Hollow Knight and Amori and Friday Night Funkin', those games were all kickstarted by its community. And all of those games have had decent success with another Hollow Knight being on the way, Amori having a diehard fan base, and Friday Night Funkin' Kickstarter making over $2.2 million. It goes to show how the interaction between developers and the fan base can create great games and content for those games. Ah, of course, of course. We have two examples in 2021 where we had a Left 4 Dead 2 update as well as a Binding of Isaac update called Repentance. And both of those stemmed from the community working with the developers, right? Um, where Valve worked with the Left 4 Dead community to make the Last Stand update. <laughs> you should have brought more tanks with you. <laughs> And where Edmund basically took inspiration from a fan-made mod called Antibirth, taking some of those ideas and working with the person who made it. And uh, we got the Binding of Isaac Repentance, which people seemed to like those, which is cool. This past year, a few of the indie games I played were House, Grimm's Hollow, Eastward, Amori, Terraria, Blue Fire, Alt F4, Dead Estate, Crab Game, Getting Over It, Turn a Boy Commits Tax Evasion, hell, even Among Us, technically an indie game, Hollow Knight, Minecraft, Deltarune, those are all some great indie games minecraft not so much anymore since it's owned by microsoft but it started as an indie game all those games i've just listed off i can remember having much more fun and them keeping my attention span more and them valuing my time more compared to some of the games that have released by these bigger developers and publishers now not every triple a game will be a banger but we've had those expectations that they should be because of the amount of people working on it the budgets behind it and the studios who are making it right and not every indie game will be a banger, but the cost to get in is usually much lower. And when you do find a good game, it's shocking how much time you can invest and the fun you'll have. And it's a huge bonus when it's half the price of a AAA game, right? I know it's unfair for me to compare all of these indie games I've played the past year compared to the few big AAA games that did come out, but I think the point still stands. And I know some of the things I use as an example were from a few years back, and COVID caused some of the games to struggle with development, and now that Microsoft has bought Blizzard, hopefully things move in the right direction. And the Halo team has also said they're trying to fix how awful the multiplayer progression feels. But I don't think false advertising will ever completely go away. I don't think the points that I made will ever completely go away. There's nothing wrong with trying to sell your game and make money. That's what companies do. But it just feels so frustrating when you'll run an alpha or a beta. And the things the players bring up don't get at all acknowledged or feel heard on. These bigger companies just feel so distant and stale, making the same game year after year. Compared to a smaller team interacting with their community more and maybe bringing out a new idea or even an older idea with a fresh take on it and a lower buy-in price. I think the comparison and the points I've made showcase a huge problem with AAA gaming still. There's a video I mentioned earlier two years ago. These problems are still relevant today and I don't see it getting better anytime soon. That's a big reason why I'm much more excited for it, happy to see when a new indie game hits the stores and everyone's talking about it. That's why I believe the future of gaming has been showcased in 2021. That is why I am much more excited to play indie games. And that's the video. Now, I don't think I said anything else that anyone didn't already know, but I still wanted to kind of make this a video and put it up on my channel. This is how I feel. This is how I felt uh, after having all this fun with these indie games. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you got to the end of this video, I do appreciate you. Um, don't forget to drop a like and a comment as it does help. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Have a good one. Appreciate you.